The next speaker will be Robert Anton Wilson, and he's known for writing uh, such works as the Illuminatus Trilogy. He's editor of Trajectories. He's also written Schrodinger's Cat, The Cosmic Trigger, Sex and Drugs. He's a columnist for The Realist and Magical Blend, and a lecturer and an essayist on futurism and quantum psychology. Robert Anton Wilson. This is your brain. <laughs> this is stupid, uninformed television commercials about drugs. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is your brain after you've been hit by those television commercials. <laughs> You all know, uh, uh, since it was in Herb Cain's column over 10 years ago, that if you rearrange the letters of Ronald Wilson Reagan, you get insane Anglo warlord. That's, uh, that's pretty well known. Uh, do you know what you get if you rearrange the letters of George Herbert Walker Bush? you get huge berserk rebel warthog. Fortunately, I, I, I always maintain a mildly LSD perspective. Uh, to most of the American people, Dr. Leary is known as the LSD guru. And most newspapers, I believe, have it set up as one lump of type. Timothy Leary, LSD guru, so they don't have to reset it every time. Uh, Dr. Leary uh, was one of the pioneers of group therapy back in the 1950s. All the 12-step programs are variations on group therapy. Dr. Leary designed the Leary Interpersonal Grid, which is the most widely used diagnostic grid in this country. It's used in the California prison system and probably in the California educational system. Probably most of you have taken uh, the verbal form, or the written form of that test at some time in your careers. Yes, he was the LSD guru. He did, he did a lot of very important research with LSD in the 60s. Leary in the 70s wrote a series of really brilliant books combining psychology and futurism. And uh, these books never got the circulation they deserved because he has been so smeared and misrepresented in the mass media. But Leary considers future stages of evolution in those books. He talks about things like why, does, why do astronauts and the Russian cosmonauts, why do they report experiences very similar to LSD? What is there about zero gravity that mutates the human nervous system in a manner similar to the psychedelics? He takes up a lot of interesting questions like that in the last 10 years. And these are very interesting and important books. In the last 10 years, he's done a great deal of work on computer software and hardware and has put out some very interesting uh, teaching uh, programs and games. And I have known him since 1964. Uh, which, if I, uh, if I haven't damaged my chromosomes uh, irreparably, that's 26 years. And uh, he has never ceased to astound me, amaze me, perplex me, and teach me something new every time we meet. And I expect in the next 26 years he will continue to do that, and if longevity research pays off, he'll be doing that for a couple of hundred years more. It's a privilege to introduce him, and you should all feel it's a real privilege to hear his latest thinking. I have been around the planet for seven decades, 
And uh, I can't think of a time when I've ever felt more concerned about uh, our country and what the uh, politicians are doing to the American dream. I'd like to uh, pay tribute to Robert Anton Wilson. I mean, uh, I sat there, as you did, and he went down the line one after one after one of the points, the issues, with humor and that special Wilson uh, savoir faire. Uh, would you join me in a round of applause for Robert again? <laughs> Uh, it's a great honor for me to be with Robert, the front bookend of this great meeting, and then the other bookend, uh, the closing remarks, be made by Terence McKenna, which uh, I find uh, something wonderful to consider. Just coming down here, I uh, bumped into, guess who, John Lilly. Uh, John... Uh, I think when the history of our a wonderful, glorious renaissance that we've been experiencing the last 30, 40 years is when it's, the history is written, um, uh, one of the great turning points it was for me and for many of you was uh, a paper written in 1972 called, uh, let's see if I, my memory can get this together now, um, Programming and Reprogramming the Human Fucking Biocomputer, I mean, boy. In, 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 that one, in that one bumper sticker, John says it all. Of course, we have to mention the father of us all, Albert Hoffman, and uh, Baba Ramdas, uh, who, our partner in time and crime at Harvard, and uh, uh, a great tribute to Frank Barron. Uh, is he here? Down in Santa Cruz. Frank Barron, who was the person that turned me on to the mysterious uh, Mexican mushrooms. I remember the time Frank Barron came to my house in... Uh, in uh, Florence, Italy, and he started raving about these mushrooms he had taken and about visions and Blakean uh, perspectives. And I said, Frank, you better quiet down <laughs> or you'll lose your credibility. <laughs> what does a brain want? I mean, talk to your brain sometime. Next time, you know, you... Get in the right mood, uh, dial brain. See what she tells you. Uh, my brain tells me, number one, uh, she wants to be fed. Uh, I find it interesting to look back and realize that, see, I said, to me, the human unit, the basic human unit, is individual in a small group. I call it the individual group. The group has got to be uh, small enough that everybody knows everybody else and, and can uh, understand and accept and or tolerate uh, the individuality eccentricity because once you free people, free the elements, it's all quantum physics, once you free the elements and the elements start zooming around, you're, you may not like a lot of the elements that you free, but that's all right. They're one of us and in a small group we can, uh, we can identify with, with each other's, look around this room, I mean, incredible panorama and spectrum of individuality and uh, uh, singularity and <laughs> Two-legged event horizons moving around here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's interesting, the very word cyber, cybernetics. The first electronic engineer said cybernetics means control of data and feedback. <laughs> oh, no shit, Sherlock, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the word cyber comes from the Greek word pilot, and you can see why. Uh, how wonderful. See, that we're coming right back again to the Socratic situation, Athens, that wonderful place where where people sat around speculating, was taking for granted that the purpose of human life was to, uh, to, to know they sweat, and that's what Socrates, that was his bumper sticker, know thyself. My brain says I've done what she wanted me to do today. <laughs> uh, remember, she wants to be fed, she wants to be fed, um, she wants to be fed uh, her vitamins, she wants to be fed electronics, she wants to be fed new ideas, but basically she wants to get in communication. She wants to get an eyeball, eyeball, 
lens screen multimedia communication with others of uh, her ilk. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got to talk to you. Coming down, let me walk you around. 